Hello, welcome to the video. I wanted to take a moment and chat with you about intrusion detection and intrusion prevention systems. This is an important topic for production networks and for individuals who are preparing for their CISSP. Let's begin. I'd like to start off with a question. If we had a device on our network, say Bob was sitting at this computer and he was launching malicious attacks against Lois at this computer right here, my question is, would we want to know about that? Yes or no? And the answer is absolutely yes, because we want to be able to identify any type of malicious traffic, including malicious traffic that is sourced internally or traffic from an attacker on the outside who is forwarding traffic into our network. A very common method that we can use to identify malicious traffic is something called IDS and IPS. It's all about intrusion detection or intrusion prevention systems. And here's the biggest difference. With an intrusion detection system, we're simply going to plug this guy into the network. And as an example, let's take all of VLAN 11's traffic and do the switch, copy it out to the network appliance. So we're getting copies of that data. And when our IDS appliance sees that malicious traffic, it can send off an alert. However, because it's just a copy of that data, this IDS appliance isn't really in the middle of it. It can't stop the attack. And that's why IDS is referred to as intrusion detection. It has the ability to see the traffic, perhaps fire off an alert saying, hey, this happened, but it can't stop it because it's not in line. Now let's compare that with IPS which stands for Intrusion Prevention System. It works a lot like an IDS, except we're going to put it in line with the traffic. For example, the current path between PC1 and PC2, because they're in different VLANs, is going to be through their default gateways. And so this red line represents a trunked connection between the switch and the router. So if we got rid of that connection, and instead put a connection from the switch to the appliance, and the appliance to the router, then for PC1 or anybody else in this VLAN to get to their router or to any other networks for that matter, the traffic is going to go from VLAN 11 up through the IPS, which is now in line with the traffic to its default gateway. And if the traffic was destined for PC2, the reply traffic would go in this direction, back over through the IPS and down to VLAN 22. But see the cool thing, because this appliance is now in line, it's now considered to be an intrusion prevention system. Why? Because if it does see malicious traffic, it can go ahead and stop that traffic right in its tracks, thus preventing that attack from moving any further in the network. Now, these are both examples of network-based intrusion detection and intrusion prevention because we're analyzing and looking at network traffic. There's also host-based intrusion prevention and detection, which involves running software on these computers and servers and we're reading application logs and security logs and taking a look at the registry on Windows machines, looking for any malicious behavior locally on that computer. And that's what host-based IPS or IDS is all about. Now, one of the benefits, the pros, if you will, of using network-based IPS is that if we're looking at the traffic right here on the network, we're going to cover a whole bunch of computers network traffic. The negative is we aren't seeing what's happening actually on that computer. If there's an attacker locally sitting at this computer trying to break into that computer, a network-based IPS, that's a negative side, it won't be able to see that local activity. As far as host-based IPS, the benefit is it will see local activity on that computer. However, it is going to take some overhead on this computer because it's going to run as an application. So there's going to be a slight performance hit on that device. And if we want to protect 10,000 computers, with host-based IPS, we're going to have to buy licenses and install that software on 10,000 computers. So the cost and the overhead is probably going to be greater than using a network-based intrusion prevention or detection system. I remember in the movie The Wizard of Oz, there was a statement that said, are you a good witch or a bad witch? And an IPS slash IDS device has that same question to ask. Are you a good packet or are you a bad packet? How does it know? And the two major camps for identifying whether or not a packet is a good or bad, bad meaning malicious, is through a signature match or by using some type of anomaly detection. With a signature match, we might have a vendor who's given us, for example, a thousand signatures in a database, and then every packet that's being sent is compared against that database of a thousand signatures, and if there's a pattern match, the IDS or IPS device says, woo, there's a match. Another method is based on anomaly detection, and that could be either building a baseline of what normal traffic looks like on a network. For example, at any given time, we might have 30 half-formed TCP sessions in place. This is when people are initially connecting and setting up their connections for sessions. 
So with anomaly detection, we could build a baseline that says, you know what, 30 is the average. And then we could set up some clipping levels, for example, and that clipping might happen if we're like five times our baseline. The system could say, whoa, that's way too high. I'm going to generate an alert because it is a statistical anomaly from our normal baseline. Another type of anomaly detection that we could use is based on how protocols are supposed to work. And for example, if we see some behavior that is not like the normal way that TCP IP should operate, that also could be considered an anomaly and could generate an alert. So these are the two major categories of how systems, IDS systems, can identify whether or not that packet is a good packet or a bad packet. Another thing to note about network-based IDS or IPS is that we may not need a separate appliance at all. We could build perhaps that functionality into a router or into a firewall or a gateway because they're seeing all the traffic anyway. If they have the CPU to spare, it's possible we could add those signatures and that responsibility to an existing device, which is already in line with the traffic. For example, this is Smart Dashboard from Checkpoint. And what they've done is they've integrated their IPS functionality into their platform as a licensed feature. So here under the IPS section, if we want to take a look at signatures, they've got literally thousands of signatures. There's also a section for protocol anomalies. So for example, if we wanted to search for a specified protocol anomaly for FTP that had FTP in the title, we simply type in FTP and it would start soaring based on those found in the title. The great news is with any reliable vendor, they're going to be giving you updates regarding signatures so that as new attacks do come out, you can have updated signatures to continue looking for those brand new attacks as they come out on the network. I had a great time. I'm so glad you joined me for this video. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.